I live in Washington, D.C., and I am a huge fan of public transportation because I have not owned a car for the better part of a decade. So I learned in having five bus stops in front of my house that actually there's a huge amount of places that I can go to, but I never really could access them because they're hidden behind these cryptic letters and numbers that I was never able to understand. So you can always figure out where which bus to take if you use Google Maps or Transit and you know exactly where you're trying to go. But the broader question of where can I go has always been something that I was a little interested in. So there are current solutions that are offered. For example, WMATA offers a couple of maps that you're able to pull up routes, but I always found them a little bit kludgy as well as the fact that you really could only look up uh, one route at a time in a number of these. Transit is another great application. It mainly, though, focuses on if you already know exactly the bus that you are trying to take, so it's hard to actually visualize all of the different possibilities. There also are timetables at every single bus stop, but it is very difficult to decipher where exactly the starting point of the route and the ending point of the route are which makes it difficult to know of that bus stop and all those routes where it can take you. And finally, there's good old-fashioned maps, which you can pull out each map individually for each route. You also have the capability of looking at the master map, but a lot of the routes overlap, and so you get lost as you're trying to figure out where you can go. So with some of the lacking aspects of current solutions, I decided to try and build my own mobile-friendly website that would enable me to actually be able to look at where the bus can take me. So I would be able to go to any bus stop in Washington, D.C., just quickly type in the different numbers of the routes that are available, and there on a map I could see what tentacles out to all the locations that it could take me. So it's a very exploratory application that I put together, and I'm pretty excited about it. It gives you a succinct view of where you can go to, although it's by no means a production application, I thought it was a fun experiment. I built it in a couple of technologies that I was interested in. One was using Next.js, which is a JavaScript framework that I found to be very developer friendly. I used the API routes within Next.js in order to use this as a proxy to call the WMATA API, which allowed for me to hide my developer key so other people can't access the API from my identity. I also used the WMATA API, which allowed for me to call directly from the data source that is provided by the agency, and use that to surface what the routes would look like on my map. I used the technology of another great local DC technology company, which is Mapbox and they were able to provide an alternative to a couple of other mapping options that I've used, mainly Google Maps, so I got to play with a new type of mapping technology. And finally, I put it all on GitHub. So all of this code is available. You are able to look through it, uh, tweak it as you want to, and I also leave some instructions on if you want to get your own Mapbox key as well as your own WMATA key then you would be able to spin up your own instance of this Better Bus application that I put together and host your own map to see where the bus can take you. So there were a couple of things I wanted to optimize for in my bus solution. One of them was I wanted it to be a mobile application as opposed to a native application so that anyone could access it without having to download any application to their phone. So therefore it could just be a spur of the moment sort of request, where can this bus stop take me? So it's all on the web. Another big component of this was making sure that the bus routes were very easy to add and they were very proximate to the search bar as well as the map. So I was able to load in all of the routes ahead of time so you're able to use effectively a mini type ahead method and see what routes are even available on the map. So that enabled me to create these little buttons that are down here. And the other very key component that I wanted to include was caching logic. So if you had already added a bus route and removed it, if you tried to add it back, 
then the browser would remember that you had used that bus route before. So it didn't have to actually make a round trip back to the API and pull it back. So a little bit of performance optimization, knowing that I would be using this and other people would be using this while they were outside looking up a bus route directly at a bus stop. If you are interested in the code, I put together this quick little guide to give you a sense of what you might want to look at, what might be more nuanced of this project as opposed to just boilerplate in any other React or front-end application. The item that composes all of this together is the routecontext.js file, and that is a wrapper around all of the other components, mainly the map, the search bar, the tags, and within the tags, each individual tag. And really the route context ends up being the orchestrator that manages the application state. So that lives at the top of the application. If I pull up the file, what you'll end up seeing is this route provider, which is a provider of both the active routes and the cached routes, as I mentioned. And it ends up returning this context object in React. And so by wrapping the rest of the application in this, I am able to seamlessly uh, add and remove routes and that gets propagated to the map, to the tags, and to the individual tags, all from a central place that I'm managing state. This historically would have been something in more of a Redux store, but I have found that the React Context API has actually been a replacement for that in a lot of my projects that I've been tinkering with. The map.js file allows for me to basically, by tapping into the React Map GL library, use more of React like syntax to add the routes. One thing that was very important for me in particular was to focus on the actual paths that a bus could take you. I wasn't as interested in individual stops. I wasn't interested in actual buses live on a map. I just wanted to draw the lines so that you could explicitly see where the bus can go and where the bus doesn't go. If I pull up the map.js file, you will see uh, map.gl that is imported here at the top. And these polyline overlays are the main actor that allows me to feed in all of the points on a map that I receive from the WMATA API. And from that API, I actually plot them onto a layer, and that manifests itself down here in this return function. I have a map.gl, which is my map, using that React map GL library, and then tapping into that route context I end up iterating through all of those to give myself all of the polyline overlays, which are those little dots or those lines on the map that connect in order to form the path that a bus can take. The searchbar.js file is where all of the logic for fetching routes goes. Probably if I was a little more advanced of a programmer as opposed to a product manager who just likes to tinker in code, I would do something more advanced with maybe a controller that I import into here. But what I have done is kept all the logic coupled with the component, and this handles going and getting the route. It goes and it sees if I've already fetched that route before. It caches any routes. So there's a bit of logic that is included in the search bar. Mainly, it serves as a broker between routes that I have not yet gotten from the WMATA API, in which case it goes and grabs those, or it checks my local state to see if I've already surfaced that route before, and it will go and pull back a route that I've saved in the browser in state so that I don't have to make the round trip API call. Within the search bar, you will see a couple of things. Obviously, I am importing the route context which is going to be the primary item that I am checking for routes. Do they exist? Do they not exist? Something that I need to add to whenever I get a new route. I have a couple of helper functions that get fired every time I search using the search bar. I check to see if the route exists within my context. I check to see if the route is already on the map. If it's not, then obviously I want to add it. I will check to see if the route is in the cache. So a number of steps 
get taken to see, have I seen this route before? Is it on the map? Do I need to add it? And finally, all of those items are coupled up into this final submit route function. And submit route, as you can see, goes through a couple of steps. It sees, does the route exist in the context? It sees if the route is already on the map. If it's not on the map, is it in the cache? And it will run through all those things. But the final, final thing is if it passes through all of those items and we haven't found it locally in my state, then we will go and actually fetch the route from the WMATA API. And again, that is utilizing the Next.js API routes that then serves as a proxy or a pass-through to go to the WMATA API. You can finally see all of that come together in the actual UI where I will press the submit button and then on submit, I will run that submit route function and that kicks off the entire process that we just ran through. The tags are a pretty simple holding group. Really the only magic that is associated with tags.js is it uses the React transition group, which is the library that allows for me to apply some of the CSS animations where the tags fade in and the tags fade out. I actually have an entire video on React transition group that was created during the making of this Better Bus project. And so if you want to see how to apply animations to your React components, that's a pretty good place to start. I also have a starter repository for that. So naturally, there isn't a whole lot that is going on within the tags.js. Again, it is just a holding place for my tag.js. So I am going to be using my route context to map over each of the routes that should be displayed on the map. and each of those will get their own button that is displayed as a tag, effectively. And I am using the CSS transition groups that I have imported from React transition group to transition these items in, and then when they're removed, I also use them to transition the items out. Finally, the final key actor in this entire application is the tag.js. The main thing that's held in the tag.js is the ability to tap on that tag and remove it. And that will also apply some caching logic where we will store that route if it is not yet applied to the cache in the cache. So if a user wants to look up, say, bus route 90, removes it and then adds it again, we will go back to the cache as opposed to the WMATA API. And that saves us that round trip and you will find that in the file. So anywhere we are trying to figure out, update the cache, you will see the code snippets that actually push the cached items into the cache, which is managed by the route context. And that is a completely separate set of routes where they aren't necessarily on the map, they are being stored for later in case I would like to add them from the map having already accessed them. So you can see all of that is kicked off within this remove route on click function on tap if you're on a mobile device. And that kicks off by feeding in the route ID of the tag. It is then going to be passed into this remove route function. And within that remove route function, we are going to kick off a little bit of logic to figure out uh, do we need to add it to the cache does it already exist in the cache and that keeps the application a little bit more performant than it otherwise would be there's no sense in grabbing data that we've already fetched and honestly that's about everything so what I would recommend is if you are interested in this type of solution set it actually would probably be the best to clone the repository look at some of the code and just tinker with it on your own. See if you can actually get a local instance running. I've left a couple of directions in there after you install all your NPM packages. And at the end of the day, you probably have at least some level of a framework that you can take in these GeoJSON files, plot them on a map, be able to actually use Mapbox to surface routes as opposed to individual points, which I found not entirely straightforward on how to implement, but once I got it working, I was able to visualize where the bus could take me pretty easily, which I thought was an exciting opportunity to test out a whole lot of technology that I had never gotten to use. 
So hopefully this was useful, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.